Cool. So tonight, uh, for tonight's masterclass, you have the one and only Hunter Beardsley. Hunter, do you want to kick, give a quick, uh, brief highlight of who you are, what you're about? Yeah. Um, so I am one of the community leads here. Um, I get to work on events, work with our ambassadors, uh, help lead our master class programs. Um, I get to work on uh, what I think is some of the most fun projects that we do. Um, my background is the full size four by four. Um, was a long time Toyota guy, uh, had probably five or six uh, Tacoma's Tundras. Um, but just jumped over to a uh, fifth gen power wagon right now. So made the jump, but uh, yeah, full size four by four has been in my background. Right on. And uh, you got me, Andy Zielinski, product marketing manager at Onyx, kind of looking over the positioning and, and how we are bringing cool new features to market, um, some of which that we will dive into tonight. Uh, I myself am also a full-size 4x4 enthusiast. I have a 95 Land Cruiser, affectionately named Larry. Um, and we also, uh, fun fact, my family and I were, we hit the road in a converted van and used and lived off of Onyx to basically take our mobile home all over the Southwest uh, throughout the States. Uh, so a little bit about tonight, what we have going on, we are going to give a holistic overview um, from the web map. That will be the map that you access on your laptop. Um, all the how to's, dive into the functionality, some planning tips and tricks, as well as some new features that we have got coming uh, down the pipeline. Then we'll transition over to how to use the app. Um, there are a few nuances between the desktop version and the mobile version of Onyx Off-Road. So we want to make sure that you guys are well-versed in both platforms. Um, we're also going to be doing a giveaway. So make sure to stick around towards the very end. Um, but prior to, to the giveaway, we will try to tackle some of your guys' questions because I know questions will show up during the course of tonight's masterclass. So feel free to either throw the questions into the Q&A, as, as mentioned before, we'll have someone who'll, who'll dive in there, try to answer a question in real time. Um, if we don't get to it, we will try to do it during the live Q&A. And then if all else fails and we don't get to it tonight, uh, you can hit us up and our CX team will be able to get you an answer as soon as possible. So with that said, I am going to hand it over to Mr. Hunter. All right. All right. You seeing the web map there, Andy? Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. So this class covers a wide range of experiences. So um, if you've never opened the app before, um, we're going to kind of give a high level view. Um, but if you've used it a bit and comfortable and just kind of looking for more um, info on it, we will be getting into more specifics later in the class. Um, but right now we're gonna do just a walkthrough, get your bearings right, um, kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at. Um, so right off the bat, um, we're gonna see what's kind of grabs your eyes first, um, which is a whole bunch of green and blue lines. Um, right now, this map um, is pulled up of um, Big Bear uh, in Southern California. Um, I have spent a lot of time uh, over there, so I'm familiar with it. Um, we're going to dive in and start looking at what these colors are. Um, so all the green, um, those are all trails. Um, and you can zoom in and start getting more uh, details as you get more zoomed in here. But with the green, you click on it, it'll pull up. Um, the name of the area or the trail name if there is one, um, uh, what it's accessible by. Um, so you'll see this is good for full width four by four, uh, high clearance, uh, ATV, all of it. So this is probably a fire road um, and a trail length. So this is what the green lines are gonna pull up. It's gonna pull up the open dates, uh, service type if we have it, um, and just kind of, kind of give basic trail info. The blue lines, those, that's one of our favorite features um, that has the rich trail data in it. They're called feature trails. 
Um, and this will actually pull up um, technical ratings, difficulties, um, rough time it takes to complete it. Um, and then scroll down. Um, and I'll actually have a little write up of what the trail and kind of what to expect, um, as well as some photos. Um, so these blue trails um, are curated uh, by a team called the Trail Guides. Um, they are actually running the trails, tracking it, doing write up. So all these blue lines have actually had someone run this trail and they rate it. Um, we have a rating scale of kind of what these difficulty ratings mean. Um, you scroll down, you'll see that white mountain here um, comes in at a seven. So the blue trails are awesome for giving some contact, especially if you're new to the area or if you're just getting into off-roading. Um, it's a great way to kind of know what you might be getting into um, ahead of time, making sure that you're not um, taking your brand new Bronco down a rock crawler trail. Um, unless that's what you're looking for, this is also helpful to find the, the more tough stuff as well. Um, so that kind of gives some context what these green and blue lines are. Um, and as you look around, you'll see these other icons here. So you see this little um, tent icon. Scroll here to see some boat ramps. So these are recreation points as well. Um, uh, I'm not sure on the exact number, but there are hundreds of thousands of these. Um, in the app across the country. Um, so you'll see trailheads, uh, campsites, uh, and find a whole bunch of info um, when you're going to kind of plan your adventure, especially when it comes to looking at new, new areas. Um, you'll also see these lands um, kind of have different tints to it. Um, this is looking at the elite account. Um, so this has all of our private land data in it. So you can go and see this kind of has this green hue to it. Um, you can click um, on this land and it'll pull up. I mean, you see that's government land and um, the name of it. And you can actually go in and see what agency runs it. Um, so over here, you'll see there's BLM land. So if you're looking for dispersed camping, um, where you might want to be looking for something a little bit more remote um, or you know, not like a designated camping area, um, BLM land is always great for that. Um, but so this elite uh, account is going to pull all that up for private and public lands. Um, so you'll see where this is BLM land jumps over to state of California land. So the, the rules and laws are going to change of what you can actually do with that land. Um, but this is a great, great tool um, to be able to find a whole different, um, a whole number of, of uses here. So that kind of gives some context of what you're looking at when you first look at it. Um, then now we're gonna jump into the tools here. Um, so you'll see on this left column, um, you'll see uh, discover offline maps by content. So these are the tools um, that these are also, you'll also find these on the um, app on your device as well. Um, so the functionality is very, very similar. So this discover feature, uh, and is great. So when you're looking at a new area or when it pulls up where you're actually at, it's going to pull up trails that are close to you um, or in the city or region that you're looking at. Um, so let's say I am trying to find something, um, taking the family out in the Jeep and looking for something interesting, but not too crazy. I go to the discover tab and um, pull up a whole number of trails. It'll put the feature trails first because um, that has the most amount of trail data, and you can start looking around. Um, so this is super, super awesome, um, and then you can actually use this. Um, let's say you want to go up to Moab, um, so somewhere that you're not at, um, and use a search function, and then when you go to discover, um, if you're looking at the city in Moab, go to discover, it's going to pull up those feature trails of that area that you're looking at. Um, the next one is offline maps. Um, this is super, super powerful. Um, every time I'm out off-roading, I download my map ahead of time. Um, so the offline maps on the web map here, um, the process varies a little bit um, compared to uh, the device, um, but we'll jump back over to, to Johnson Valley here. 
So the offline maps, this is what's going to help you know where you're going and where you're at, um, whether you have cell service or not. So you go to offline maps. You can see I have a bunch saved here. Um, click new offline map, and you can choose um, the resolution level. Um, so if you don't want to use a whole bunch of uh, data and space on the device that it's going on, you can drop down to low. Um, but if you want the high res where you can zoom in all the way, uh, which is awesome for BLM land, if you're looking for maybe um, a camping area for you and your group, um, that's high level resolution is going to let you zoom all the way in. You can actually start seeing kind of clearings, um, different offshoot stuff like that. Um, so here we're going to put this kind of over the horse thief flats area here, and then we're going to save it. So clicking save, um, this is going to prompt it on the device um, that you are going to want to download this offline map. It does require to, you to have cell service when you download it. Um, so we always stress downloading it before you go. Um, even if you don't think you're gonna lose cell service, um, it's always good to just have it ahead of time. You don't even have to worry about it. So it'll prompt you, it's not downloading on your computer then you're gonna to go to your device. And I'll show you those steps here in a minute once we jump over to the device. Um, this is how you do it when you're kind of scouting out ahead of time on web map. So this, you'll put that green box border, you'll see, um, and you can name it. Um, if you're in a new area or like maybe you're getting a section for day one, you can, put, you can name it whatever you'd like. The next one here is my content. Um, and the more that you use this, um, the more crucial that my content area is gonna be. This is where you can sort and folder um, and keep things nice and tidy, um, which I try to do a good job of. Sometimes I'm not the best at, but you go to my content and you'll pull up all your content, all your waypoints, tracks, areas, all of it. Um, but this is where you can have your folders as well. Um, so if you're gonna be scouting area, dropping waypoints, um, I always recommend making a folder ahead of time. Um, so let's say you're going to the Grand Canyon, you can do a new folder, Grand Canyon trip. There you go. So then you can have a folder. Then when you're out scouting um, waypoints, campsites, all that, you can save it right to this folder and just really helps um, when it comes time to, if you're going to go back on that trip or you have a friend who's asking for some recommendations, um, you can sort it, find it easily. Um, and these folders you can also uh, share as well. Um, so if you have a buddy with a Onyx off-road account, um, you can take this and then you can send it right to them. Um, right here there's that little share icon you can share it in a link you can text it to them email it to them um, it's really really cool to be able to share those um, those waypoints and those tracks the next one here is my garage um, this is a, a newer feature um, that's really cool and we're, we're building this out um, but you can load the vehicles that you have um, so if you know you're going to be taking your full size four by four out, um, it's going to filter to that trail width. So let's say I am taking my power wagon out um, and I'm not looking for single track or the 50 inch trail. I'm just looking for full size. You can click that and it'll pull up uh, trail types, full width roads and high clearance. So that's where I'm comfortable taking stuff. Um, you can put in more infos about your build. And then this is just a really cool way to kind of build out um, the different toys that you're using to get outside. Well, then the next one below this is my stats. Um, this is uh, a newer edition as well. Um, this is kind of the, like everything you've done, all your tracks and waypoints. Um, 2023, you'll see I have not gone out this year yet, uh, working on fixing that. But 2022, um, you'll see there was 4,208 miles that I tracked. This is a really cool way. Um, you can share it, um, kind of show like what you've done. Um, 
So yeah, 46 tracks, 128 waypoints, um, 16 chairs. It's just a cool way to kind of commemorate and kind of look at the, the grand scheme of what you did that year. And then jumping over next, uh, we'll jump down to my account. Um, it's pretty straightforward. This is where you can change your settings, um, your account, all that info, and then also the legend. Um, so if you're ever wondering what that line means or what that dash line means, just you can scroll down to the legend and it's going to tell you. Okay. And then we'll jump up towards the center. You see that uh, orange square with the tire. Um, so this is a activity panel um, where you can filter out different trail types. And uh, you can see you're in dirt mode here. Um, you can see you can filter out. So you uncheck it, it pulls all the trails off. So if you're just looking for a single track, it'll filter that out. You'll see Big Bear, not a lot of single track here. Let's see if you can find a, another area that has a little bit more. Yeah, so you'll see out over here is pulling up just single track. Or if, you don't, if you're not looking for single track and you're just looking for full width, it's just a cool way to, to filter, make sure that um, you might not be getting bogged down or cluttered with trails that you know that you're not going to want to go down. And then map layers here. Um, so again, I have the elite membership. This has the private land data. So you can toggle that on and off. And then there's also the wildfire lake, uh, layer. So when there's an active wildfire, this gets updated and you can actually, in the app, kind of see where that boundary of that fire is. Um, Definitely in California, that is something kind of top of mind. It used to be just in the summer, but now it's kind of become a year-round concern. But this is a really cool way to be able to keep tabs on the area. Or again, if you're going to scout and look at a new area and you see like, oh, there's a big incident there, you might want to put off that trip or, or find somewhere else to go. And then over here, we're gonna, oh, before I get ahead of myself here, um, there's another mode that is snow mode. We're going to, let's jump to where I know there is snow. Okay, so going back to activity panel, um, there is snow mode. Um, so for our snowmobilers, our snow bikers, this is super powerful. Um, I also know a whole bunch of people who use this for snow wheeling as well. So there's some really cool tools in here that you can use uh, to kind of scope out um, if you're looking for a place to ride. So let's jump over to here. So you'll see slope angle, slope aspect, so you can look how steep um, an area is, um, kind of see some avalanche risk. Um, and then there's also um, snow tell data as well. Um, so let's zoom back out. So you see these snowflakes here? You can click on that, and that's going to pull up um, the snow tell data for that area, um, which is super, super cool. Um, that's a newer integration for us. Um, so it's going to tell you snow depth, temperature, and the last 24 hours accumulation. So if you're looking for fresh powder, this is a great way to find it. Um, there's also a lot of uses for snow wheeling as well. So um, if you're looking for snow wheeling, you're looking for that deep snow, if you're looking for snow or snow wheeling, looking for deep, fresh snow, snow wheeling, you're looking for something to kind of get in the snow, but nothing too crazy. And this is an awesome way um, to kind of get tabs before you actually go out. So you see snow depth, temperature, snow water equivalent, a whole bunch of really, really cool data. Um, this is primarily just in the west um, where there are mountains and um, there's just a lot more regular snow and a lot more snow activities as well. But so you can see through different areas out here in Clearwater National Forest, you can see the different um, types here. Um, you see this purple trail as well. These are snowmobile routes. Um, so you can pull that up. Oops, my Wi-Fi catches up here. Um, they'll tell you if it's a groom trail or not, um, and you get frequency, a um, whole bunch of really cool info on that. And then you see how the map changed colors as I uh, 
zoomed in here, you'll start seeing that, that slope aspect. Um, and then two finger drag, you can get it to switch over to 3D mode. So if you're looking to kind of preview stuff or kind of get a, a feeling of what an area is like, you can jump right into 3, 3D mode on the desktop over here. We'll jump back over to the dirt. And Hunter, and get... real quick, I'm going to jump in on the snow thing real quick. Um, being someone who is up in uh, the northern parts of the states, uh, Snowtel has actually been a super useful tool uh, for myself and many others, um, especially with the transition between hot and cold temperatures. And by hot, I mean warming up trends, cooling trends. So before going out, um, Snowtel really will be able to provide kind of like that intel and insight into potential avalanche dangers. So it is one thing just to kind of keep in mind, we know that the use cases might be limited, but it is a very powerful tool. Um, and even, even if you find yourself not being a regular snowmobiler, but you want to travel in the snow with your full size, full size 4x4 or uh, ATV or whatever the case is, and you're, and you're ripping around and you want to get up in some powder, uh, Snowtel it would be a powerful uh, tool for you. You would just need to access that information in the snow activity mode and then toggle back to dirt. So it's a little bit of a jump back and forth, um, but it is a useful and beneficial tool for the general off-roader who's not looking to sled. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll touch a little bit more on snow here. Um, just as you'll see, these colors get pretty intense. Um, but on the top right, um, you'll see the kind of slope angles. Um, and you can start seeing where stuff gets really, really steep um, and where there might be some, some more safer paths to take. Um, so paired with 3D mode, um, this is really, really cool way to kind of scout out um, places that you're looking to go. And we're gonna jump back to dirt mode here, back down to sunny SoCal in the desert. We're going to keep rolling through here. We're going to uh, go down the right side of the screen here. You're going to see the tools. Um, we're going to start off um, on Route Builder. Um, this is a newer edition as well, um, something that we're really, really excited to, uh, to release. Um, so if you've been using Onyx uh, for a while, you'll probably have spent time in the the line drawing tool um, where you are clicking and plotting points um, for a route. Um, route Builder here um, really kind of changes the game, especially if you're looking for the two day, three day trips. Um, so we're going to do a quick run through here um, of what Route Builder can do. Um, so you'll see on the right side of the screen here, this kind of S shaped dotted line. Um, you click that and it pulls up uh, the route builder here. So you can go ahead and name it. Let's say desert trip day one. So let's say you are starting here right off the freeway. There is a feature trail that you've scoped out um, that you like. Click snap to make sure you're there. And then you click, you drop your first point. And then you'll see as you move your cursor, it's going to follow you. So you're not having to click and drop individual points um, as you go. So this really speeds up the process of when you're going to make a route. Um, so it's going to follow you along. And then let's say that we are on a motorcycle here. We'll zoom in. And you'll see it'll start following your, your path there. Um, so you can kind of click and you'll see that line uh, keep going as you go through the, uh, the path here. And then the more you, the longer you make that route, um, you'll see in this bigger pop-up window. Um, and it does look a little bit different because I am zoomed in. Um, so you guys can see the buttons a little bit better. Um, but this, it'll start giving you the distance, elevation gain, and loss. 
um, as you build this, this route out. So this is something that we're really, really excited about. And um, when it comes to trip planning, this it's kind of a game changer. Um, so then you can save it um, and go through, change the route color. Uh, so if you want to keep things super organized, you can change the colors, uh, style of the line, and then you can also drop in notes. Um, and then you click save here. And then there is desert trip day one. Um, so that is something that we've been working on for a long time. It's been probably one of the most frequently asked um, things to add, and we're happy to add that. It, it is here. I'm currently just on web map. Um, the device based is in process, um, but right now it's primarily for uh, the web map. On, on okay. And then let's jump back here. Spend some time. Let's go back to uh, in the Bighorn Mountain Wilderness area. Um, so we'll touch on the other tools. Um, so let's say if you are in an open riding area um, where there might not be specific trails, um, you can click and draw points as well. You can draw um, routes as well. Um, so if you want, just like that, and gives you um, estimated distances as well. Um, and then same process with saving or editing it. Uh, you can name it whatever you'd like. And then at the end of it, you'll have a route um, with the info and you can click that share button. And then if someone else has, one of your buddies has an Onyx off-road account, um, you can share it with them. Okay. And then just to touch on um, seeing some questions pop up in the chat, if you have questions, you can drop it in the Q&A session. We have some of our um, CX team. Um, those guys are furiously typing away, answering as many questions as they can. Um, so if you're looking for answers, um, they can answer some there. And then we'll also be doing run through those in the Q&A session. The next tool here is the draw shape and measure area. Um, this has some, some pretty cool uses. Um, I've known people to use it to, um, actually knew a guy who used it to quote a pressure watching area. Um, he zoomed in um, and you can draw out the area. So if you're looking for um, kind of the rough size of an area where you know you have a whole bunch of people um, going to the desert with a whole bunch of people with trailers, you can kind of scope out and see what kind of a, a size an area is. The next is waypoints. Um, these are super, super useful. And the more you use Onyx, the more you are going to um, be using those. So let's say you are finding a camping spot in this open riding area and you zoom in and you find it. So click add waypoint and then you can click and drag and drop. Let's say that is where you found you want to camp or there's a really cool view that you found. Um, you can drop a waypoint. Um, you can name it the camp one. You can select the icon, run through. There's a bunch of different things to help keep things organized again. Um, let's say that um, this is where a spot where you want to air up or air down, or there's a cool cave, tons of different options of what you can mark these as, um, as well as the color. And you can drop notes in. Um, if there's some descriptions you want to add to it, you can also add photos to it. Uh, I really like this. Or the more that you're out there, you're going to be coming across new areas and there's, oh, there's a really cool campsite or that really cool viewpoint, or was it you can put in the notes, put in photos, um, and you can add it to your folders as well. And then from there, you can save it. It'll be living on the app. Um, and then you can, you can share it as well. Um, and then just want to note everything, all these routes um, and things and waypoints and lines um, that you do on web map will populate in the device. Um, so we're going to jump over that here in a minute. Um, but as you scope these out, 
you'll see it show up on the device as well. Okay. Next is the compass kind of give you bearings of where north is. Um, see, as I two finger click and rotate the trackpad, uh, you'll see that north uh, shifts there. Click it again, it'll point you back north. Um, there is the zoom out, zoom in, and then here is the base maps. Um, you can do 2D map or jump to 3D. Um, you can do just satellite or hybrid of satellite and topo, or if you want to keep things clean, um, you can run just topo. Um, and then in 3D mode here, uh, we'll jump back to, jump to hybrid. And then you can adjust the uh, elevation exaggeration. So if you really want elevation changes to pop, uh, you can adjust that um, to where those, those mountains kind of pop out a little bit more. So then uh, one of the last things we'll touch on, um, you'll see is the weather. Um, so this does pull up the weather of that location that you're looking at, um, give you, uh, rain, sunrise, all that, um, wherever you're going to go scope out. Um, it'll give you a weather forecast. Um, this is super, super cool. Um, let's say if you're at the bottom mountain and you're looking to head up a mountain, you can zoom in and see what the, the conditions are up at the top there. Okay. So that kind of covers web map. I know we're throwing a lot of information at you. Um, there's just a lot of things to cover and we have about an hour. Um, so from there, we are going to jump here out of web map and then I will pull up the device here. So Andy, you seeing a, uh, a map come up? Yep, we got you. All right, perfect. Okay, so this is similar area that we were just looking. Um, you'll see that Andy Kane border square right in the middle. That is actually the offline map um, that we had dropped on web map. Um, so that red and white border means that that is something that you have put in as you want that offline map, but that means that it's not fully downloaded yet. Um, so you can zoom in, go to your offline maps, um, and you'll see the green checks, they're already downloaded. Um, but uh, you'll see this has that download arrow. It's hit that and I'll start downloading um, so you can have that. Okay, so again, just to give, quick rundown. Um, this is on an iPhone, um, Android, very similar look. Um, iPads as well, obviously screen size different. So the layout's going to be a little bit different, um, but the tools and functions are going to be pretty much the same. So again, um, I don't have a cursor, so I'm going to try and call out what I'm looking at. Um, we're going to start at the bottom row here on the left on that discover tab. So same exact function as the web map, hit that discover, and then it's going to pull up those trails that are close to the area that you're looking at. And then again, there is that activity, that orange square with a tire, pull that up, pulls up your activity menu, sort your, your trail type, your map layers, or jump to snow mode, um, all that good stuff there. And then again, there is my content. And we'll see how that folder that I made on web map is now on my device. Um, and if I drop waypoints in there, those would be in there as well. Um, so then that folder there, and there is that share icon. So you can tap that and share it as a link or as a text um, to whoever you're going out on the trip with or whoever you want to share that with. Um, I do want to note the things that you add in here. Um, they are not shared with everyone. Um, they are yours. So the question we get pretty frequently is, oh, I don't want to put a waypoint on my kind of secret spot. Um, those waypoints, those are yours. 
Um, and if you have a group you want to share it with, you can share that waypoint or that um, whatever that data is with someone. Um, and everything you share is view only. Um, so they can't go in and change any of that. So if you send them a track or a route, um, they can't edit or change any of that. So um, your content stays your content um, and you can pick and choose who you want to share that with. Um, so the next thing uh, on the bottom row here is tools. Uh, you'll see these um, pop up. You'll see the same line distance. I'll give you guys another quick rundown. You'll see that waypoint that we dropped as well as that little um, route that we drew. But hit that line distance. You can line it up with your finger, line it up on those crosshairs, and then you'll hit that drop point icon. And then you'll start drawing that, that line there. Um, and then you can still go in, name it whatever you'd like. It'll show you distance, elevation gain. Um, and then you can pick what folder you want to add that to. Um, so let's say that um, we are doing a moto trip in Johnson Valley. We can make a new folder. Okay, you can save it. Um, and again, um, especially if you are just starting your Onyx off-road account, um, keeping things organized is super, super helpful. Um, so then whenever you want to go back or share anything with anyone, it's it's all right there and easy to find. So hey Hunter, will you um as we're going through just the folder process, I think it would be helpful, especially because it's new. Would you mind going through the share flow up until uh you actually send it? So pretend you're sending me the, the Johnson Valley trip. How would that look? Okay. Um, so you go to my content and then scroll through, there's that folder there. Um, let's tap that there. And then there's that share icon. So as you drop in your waypoints and build this all out um, and your uh, your tracks and all of that info, um, you can build that out and then it just comes into a, a shareable file here and you can tap it there. And then it prompts you, reminds you that it is bare view only. People that you're sending it to can't edit it. Um, you can hit share folder and it'll pull up who you want to send things to. So um, folder sharing is super, super cool. Um, I know of people who are doing, uh, running Raptor runs, Raptor groups, they'll plot out their, um, the route they're gonna run and then they will make a folder, um, building out those waypoints uh, or, or like camp spots, stuff like that. Um, they can share that. Awesome, yeah. And just to uh, double click on that one real quick guys, uh, we are super excited about the folder sharing. It's been, uh, along with uh, uh, several other features like Route Builder, a highly requested feature. So get in there, play with that. Um, one thing to note um, specifically to Route Builder and folder sharing. So we do encourage you guys to, on the web, uh, the web map, so on your laptop, be building routes, be playing around with routes, save those routes especially as you guys are dreaming and, and planning for future trips. But do know uh, those will save to your mobile device, um, but those routes currently will not be shareable when you share your folder. They will show up uh, in your mobile device. They just won't be able to be shared at this time. Um, but we are working on that and there's more exciting news to come on that. So just want to give a quick plug on, on that piece, Hunter. So keep going. Perfect. All right. So we touched on tools there. And the last um, feature on the bottom here is go and track. Um, this is super, super cool. Um, it's going to pull up your location and um, you can hit that record track and that's going to follow you. Um, you can also see um, as I, as a device rotates, you'll see your heading rotate. Um, so this, you can hit record track and it's going to track um, where you're going, um, your elevation changes, your speeds. Um, so say you have a really cool loop that you like, um, you can hit that uh, go and track and it'll follow that um, track for you. Um, you can pause it, say you're taking a, a lunch break. Um, you don't really wanna have that kind of going to, into your elapsed time. 
Um, you can hit pause there. Uh, if you hit um, the end of it, you can hit end, and then you're going to pull up and see um, your, your track. And then that all the tracks that are saved are going to go in back into my content, and you'll scroll down, and it's going to load into that track section. Um, I'll tap that here um, and pull up some here. Uh, so just kind of see what that looks like. Um, so this is part of the Baja 1000 course, um, but you'll see that that blue line um, is where someone actually went and ran. Um, another cool thing about these um, tracks um, is that, again, they are shareable. You can put it um, in a folder, uh, and then you can also uh, just share that out. You can edit. Um, you can also trim it here. Um, so let's say you left it running um, on your moto trip, you get back to the truck and you forgot um, to stop it. Um, so it's pretty easy to find if that happens, uh, but you can actually edit out what that track is. So you can start taking off time. Um, so if you accidentally left it running and there's a big old long line of you driving down the highway in your truck, instead of the stuff that you're actually doing on your dirt bike, um, you can go in and edit the beginning or the end of that, um, just to make sure that um, that track stays and, and documents what, what you want it to. Okay, let's, we'll jump back to Texas here. Um, other buttons uh, in the top right corner, you're gonna see that magnifying glass works exactly the same as web map, um, but you can search in uh, different areas. Let's go back to Johnson Valley and it's gonna pull up um, different uh, options. So you shared use, tap it, you jump over there. And again, it's gonna pull up, um, go back to discover. It's gonna pull up stuff close to that area. Um, so that covers um, a lot of the tools here. Um, looking at the timing, I think, uh, Andy, if it sounds good to you, we'll probably jump over to uh, the next thing in our docket. Yeah, yeah. So um, we do have some questions, Hunter. So I think maybe before we jump out of uh, the screen share, um, one question that I did pull over was, adding photos. Did you cover how to add photos? So if you're out on the trail, you either find a downed uh, tree log or just some cool artifact, um, adding a trail or adding a, a photo to the app. Yeah. Um, so we'll go through kind of the full cycle. Let's say you're running down the trail. You are right here. And oh my gosh, I saw the coolest fill in the blank. Um, so you can tap and long hold um, on the iPhone, um, and that's going to drop a waypoint. Um, let's name it um, huge deer. Let's say you saw a huge deer at this spot, um, and then you can go through and then enter here, get out of that. Um, and then in that photo section, um, you'll just hit, hit add, and it's going to pull up your photo library, and you can pick um, what, what that photo is. Um, and again, there's the notes. You can type in whatever relevant information that you want. Cool. And then uh, this came up a few times and I think it's worth just uh, double clicking on. So uh, you are able to see people's land information. Um, and then the question also comes up, uh, what is what is the difference between premium and elite? So you want to give a quick high level view of, of the benefits of elite and um, what you get out of that? Yeah. Um, so let's go to where there, let's jump to more populated area um, to kind of give a better example of what that private land data gets you. Um, so in all 50 states, it's going to pull um, the land ownership data um, of that area. Let's make sure my filter is on. Yep. So private land there. Um, so you'll start zooming in and you'll start seeing these names pop up. So whether it's public or private land, you're going to see either the landowner name, um, 
or the agency that runs that land if it's public. Um, but let's zoom in here and you'll see this is some kind of construction plan. So this is private land data across the country. Um, there's a lot of cool different uses for this, um, but yeah, it pulls up the owner, tax address, um, and the rough area of that private land. Um, so uh, there's a few different use cases. Um, one uh, I've heard um, is someone actually was driving on the highway and they saw uh, a, a land cruiser parked out in the field. Um, they went into the app and then it pulled out up the name of who owned that land and then tax address. And they actually sent a letter to them when the, they like to purchase that. And um, that's how they found the vehicle is using the private land data. Um, also, it just helps you make sure that the land, let's say you're out in the open desert um, and the, the land you're on, it just lets you know where you are, um, which is super, super crucial that you're not setting up camp on private land or you're accidentally um, on a military base or you name it, just it helps you know whose land it is, where you're standing, um, and it just kind of rules out any questions or accidental trespassing. Um, so that is, then that um, comes with that elite membership. Um, so that's in all, all 50 states. Right on. Um, I, I'm sure you've had experience with this. I have as well. Um, so we let's say prior to Route Builder um, coming online for Onyx off-road, uh, we do know that at times it was a bit cumbersome to build a track um, or to build a route. So we might have done that in another platform like Gaia, but we are we do prefer the the benefits of Onyx, how would I go about just pulling that GPX file from another service and bringing it over to Onyx and importing? Okay, for that, um, that's super, super straightforward here. Um, we're going to jump over to web map. Um, but I think we're going to run through some questions um, in that next here. But let's jump to back to web map. Um, and you see the web map there, Andy? Perfect. Okay. So let's say you have a GPX file that you want, um, and you're pulling from another platform, and you want it to be in your Onyx off-road account. Um, you just go right to your uh, My Content, and you hit Import. Um, so you can just drop that. Uh, it's going to pull up um, the Import File window, uh, where you can either select from your computer or just drag and drop. Um, either KML or GPX files. Um, and uh, what I always like to do um, when I'm importing like a whole bunch of stuff, um, I always make a new folder for that import. So just again, helping keeping you organized as you build out um, kind of your portfolio of, of trail data. Cool. Um, we do have a real time question that I'm I'm reading right now. Um, if someone is offline, meaning no cell or Wi Fi service in the middle of nowhere, and he drops a pin, is his wife at home going to be able to see where he is? The answer, Dave Ward, congratulations, you are correct. The answer is no. Um, we are looking um, at ways to uh bring in a buddy tracker service that is not available now um but that is something that we are constantly being asked about so um yeah you the loved one at home will not be able to see that uh if it is shared um let's see there how how to identify latitude and longitude of a location yeah so that um is easy as well. Um, so right here, we will click, let's see, this area here. Um, so you just click on that spot that you want to see, and you scroll down. Um, again, this is in the lead account, so it pulls up who owns that land. Um, but yeah, so it'll pull up the exact coordinates, um, and you can copy right in that window and, and send that as well. Um, so it's super, super quick and easy to, uh, to find it. 
Cool. Um, and then we'll end on this one because I think this is a, a fun question. And I think both you and I, Hunter, can take a stab at answering this uh, from our uh, two different perspectives. But uh, what what are the most common features that people overlook where they might be they they might be overwhelmed or excited to get into the app? Uh, but they just might miss the most basic feature. What, what would you point them? Where would you point them to? Um, one um, is what I would say um, is the discover feature. Um, if you're just thinking that it's going to be where you are at that time. Um, it's an awesome, super powerful way to find new trails. Um, it's one of my favorite ways, um, especially when it comes time to finding a place to go with my family hitting that uh, discover feature um, is, is super helpful. Um, but then probably my second best um, is going to be Route Builder, especially since it is newer. Um, not everyone knows about it. Um, it's something that really speeds up the process um, and let, kind of takes my planning to the, the next level um, of being able to scout out and, and plan longer routes kind of give better planning of, uh, where I'm where I'm looking to go. Yeah, that's awesome. And I would say, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer, but it is one that can be often uh, overlooked, especially when in field and out of cell range, which uh, for me would be offline maps. Um, Hunter, I think what you said earlier is a fun little kind of tagline, download before you go. I think oftentimes we find ourselves in situations where we're excited to hit and run a trail. And then <clears throat> lo and behold, we are out of uh, cell coverage. And then the map starts uh, breaking up, whatever the case might be. A simple uh, preparation in advance of that trip, scouting, planning, preparing, uh, you know, determining the resolution size, depending on what you want stored on your phone. You know, I spent a week in the Mojave Desert um, back earlier this fall, and there were moments where it was absolutely critical uh, to have the offline map saved to our device to, to make sure we knew where we were going and where we we're going to end up each night. So I would say offline maps is absolutely key. Um, but then also, you know, I think folder sharing is a really, really, really fun tool, um, especially as you know, the, the season starts ramping up and we're getting out and we're hitting hitting more trails, getting the buddies together. One thing I don't know, Hunter, if we did cover, uh, but depending at the, at the Zoom level, if you zoom in at certain spots, you will find icons um, that will show kind of rec points, whether that's a gas station, whether that's a camp location, that can also be super useful when planning your trip. So, you know, if you are considering a place to camp, um, we have icons that, that will show you designated uh, spots to camp. If you are worried about fuel and you want to have fuel stops along the way, you're not carrying extra fuel, uh, you will see fuel stations as well as trailhead markers. Um, and again, this is all an effort to make sure that the planning is the most successful up front. So that way you can make sure that you're having the best time and you get back safely. So with that, I think we are close to time. So I will steal the share from you and we will end with, you guys have been really great, really patient. Uh, so thank you so much. It's been fun to walk through all of this with you guys. Hunter, can you see my screen? Yep. Cool. So like we said, uh, we are going to be doing a giveaway. Um, so make sure uh, that you that you click. Uh, and, and if they haven't done so already, please drop that into the chat. But go visit the link to enter. No purchase is necessary, but an Onyx account is required to redeem the, the gift. Uh, tonight, the gift is a beanie, tis the season. I was wearing a beanie all day today. Uh, these beanies are great. So we have 25 to give away. Uh, please go enter. Um, the entries close at midnight tonight, so get on it. And then uh, if you guys 
are interested, um, follow us along, you know, on social. We are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Snap. We got all the content dropping all the time. A ton of fun new series coming out uh, in 2023. So be sure to give us a like, a, sub a subscribe, a thumbs up, a smashing the bell or stuff that you do on those channels uh, because we have a lot of awesome stuff coming up there. And with that, yeah, thank you guys so much. Happy trails. Uh, we are excited that you came along the journey with us and we will uh, catch you out there. Safe journeys. Thanks, everyone.